When we combine NGSS with project-based learning, also called PBL, students who may not see themselves as successful in science are able to fully participate in scientific practices such as supporting claims with evidence. Throughout this series, we observed an ecology and genetics unit about the red-winged blackbird. We saw three very different students, James, Ellen, and Sydney, curious, creative, and intelligent with three different perspectives, each develop an interest in science. And when they're up and pointy, that means back off. So it's like threatening, sort of. And when I bend them down, that means come and play or socializing. Student agency increases with the combination of NGSS and PBL. According to Dr. David Stroop, agency is the drive to figure things out in the sense that one has the skills and interest to do so. They're working together. But what about the teachers? Do they also develop agency in a classroom that combines NGSS and PBL? Without having to say a word, they don't have to sit there and call out to every animal or every other bird that flies by. They can just raise their epaulets and show that. Is there room for each teacher's unique perspectives, creativity, and curiosity? There is one standing up there. Oh, yeah! What do you notice about its epaulet? It's oh, look at it now. Where'd it go? It went into the nest. It just went into the tall grass. It went into the nest. What makes you think that? They live down there on the ground. It went to tall grass. Agency for teachers means the drive to figure out and foster the learning taking place. You're going to invite you to walk around with your pencil and write different ideas that you have for what the epaulette is for. In this video, we focus on Dom and Alice, who are teaching the unit together. They are two very different teachers, each with their own strengths and approaches to teaching. Here, walk over here and show me where the trees are. We explore what teaching a combination of NGSS and PBL offers them. Again, we're being scientists, we're observing things. Alice has taught for 15 years, she is also one of the unit authors. She felt energized by doing her own research. And I studied the, the one trait of the epaulette, and that we kind of zero in on that. And we talk about how um, every, every characteristic, every physical feature of, of the animal or of, of, of the bird in this case, um, helps it to find a mate, reproduce, and to survive. A lot of science units are pre-written or packaged for teachers who are constantly strapped for time. But this work reminded Alice how much teaching science goes hand in hand with learning science. The unit captivated her imagination. She knew that red-winged blackbirds lived in Wisconsin, but not about how they were adapted to the area's wetlands. That when the bird made its call, the epaulets would go up. Oh, and in the wintertime, mostly the epaulet would fade more. And in the summertime, the epaulet would mostly pop out more. The epaulet's red part comes out and um, <laughs> um the epaulet kind of like pop out to scare like other birds so like it's like their territory were they trying to be territorial at that time mm -hmm. no why not because, because they know each other they don't need to control territory when they know each other and they're not going to take anything Alice also loves teaching literacy. She used a close reading strategy to introduce the students to a study from Stanford. Close reading is often presented out of context with what students are doing. But in this case, students read a summary of a study design about heredity and red-winged blackbird social behavior. Raise your hand if there's any words there that you're not sure about. The students were highly motivated because they had already been outside and were asking questions about the epaulette trait and how it helps the red-winged blackbird survive. What did the Stanford scientists do to some of the red-winged blackbirds' patches? Go ahead. They dyed them black. So did they dye them all black? No, mm -hmm. no. They left them still red and orange. And that would be when they say the control males, those are the ones they left alone. That science taught for leaving them alone, and then they colored some of them black. So what would that look like if you had an epaulette that was dyed black? What would the black bird, what would the red wing blackbird look like? A, black a regular blackbird. Mm -hmm. So just no epaulette at all, right? On this sheet, you have an opportunity to plan out the sign to show that I need space and a sign to show that I'm friendly. Dom is Alice's teaching partner. He is a new teacher in the second year. 
He loved the authentic and meaningful components of the PBL unit, but was a little reticent at first, since it was a new experience to him. And it could change depending on the mood and the situation. He was able to focus on supporting interest, ideas, and questions, which came from a need to know. Prairie Road right here is us. And we've got this little strip of land that goes out into the water, has water on three sides, is almost surrounded by water. And what do we call that land form? Claire, what do we call that? Peninsula. That is called a peninsula. So typically, uh, the study of birds, often anyway, is uh, flamingos and penguins. So I'm wondering, like, do you find there's some, like, reason why you chose to look at red-winged blackbirds instead of flamingos and penguins? Well, they're around here, <laughs> naturally occurring in, in our environment. And when we played their song, almost all the students said that they recognized <laughs> hearing that bird call all the time up outside their window or different places we go around Madison. It's a beautiful bird, and I think it also um, affords us an opportunity not only to observe them in their natural habitat, mm -hmm. but then also to use that behavior to kind of extrapolate and think about some of the unique features that this bird has and thinking about it as an adaptation for survival and then being able to connect that to all animals uh -huh. Uh -huh. and all the different strange adaptations they've made to survive in different niches in their environments. He was inspired by the PBL project in which students create something that encompasses their new understandings. This is sometimes called an artifact and teachers can use this to assess each student's learning. Once they come up with something as a group, we can put it on a Padlet, or most of us, our students know how to put these on a Padlet, and they can come up with group ideas to put up there as well. In PBL, each unit has an artifact that students collaboratively design. RWBB show this link may try to look bigger so another red wing blackbird won't try and take the territory. This blue dot is where our bus is going to park. Dom introduced the mapping activity. By looking at this map, where do we think we're going to want to start walking and looking for these birds. With his help, the students were able to use maps to check their predictions about where in the marsh they were likely to see birds building nests. The mapping supported geometry, scatter plots, and data and mapping skills included in the Common Core as well. We had some great observations, the students doing a great job tracking how many birds they saw and using the map um, in new ways that they hadn't tried before. The opportunity for those kids to, to come to these discoveries by themselves without us just telling it to them, I think, uh, mm -hmm. gives them a deeper understanding. Would somebody like to read about the things that they eat right here next to this food section? And nice and loud for us. Red winged black blackbirds eat to make, eat eat mainly insects in the summer and seeds, including corn and wheat. At the end of the unit, Dom said that he saw firsthand how each new day the students added deeper understanding to what is known and became more confident in expressing their ideas even when they weren't certain that they were correct. In the fall and winter they eat wheat, weedy seeds such as ragweed. Ragweed. Ragweed and... Dom was excited to be able to see the longer-term trajectory for learning that the NGSS units have. The progressions for learning add cohesion for students and teachers. He learned how questions in an NGSS unit about a natural event in the marsh build a rich toolkit that students can use to understand and explain other events in the world. I chose these open spaces because there are insects fly there and um, they, the, the um, red winged birds can go, to, can go to the open spaces and go get their food. Yeah. I choose this part because um, they have a lot of space to make a nest and there's uh, a lot of insects. You know? I chose um, this. I chose this spot because it has tall grass and they live near insects in water and moss. Dom noticed his students really liked figuring out the pieces to the puzzle. This took the pressure off to be right. I like changed my mind because I thought most of the um most of the birds would be in A B two. But it turns out most of the birds are in age three. Dom found himself thinking about science learning in a new way, and his drive to learn more about this learning is agency. 
I think that we might find the red when blackbirds in C2 because there is food, water, and shelter. We have food, water, and shelter. So she's looking to have those birds' needs met all in one place. That would be where I want to live, where everything I need is close by. She says C2, which is right out here in this region. Alice and Dom were both enriched by the lesson personally and through the excitement of their students. So what things do scientists do? Sometimes they, they're very curious, so they kind of experiment with things. Uh -huh. So. And you're very curious, so you must be kind of like a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Both teachers talked about agency. They felt motivated to teach science because they were able to trust their instincts as teachers and also make mistakes and take chances. And, and that's what I hope they do is, is make up their own questions and then search for the answers, as, as she did in this case, asking her own questions. All kids do it all the time, but now they're actually looking at their questions and saying, this is a question I can do something about. I can find out the answer to this. Through NGSS and PBL, both Alice and Dom became more engaged in teaching science. Although each is in a different place in their careers, both felt more successful as teachers.